Welcome, my dear learners, for this course on Engineering Graphics. In our Module 3, we are discussing about orthographic projection of solids. Continuing our discussion on solids, today I am going to introduce a new topic in projection of solids, which is nothing but a triangular pyramid. The triangular pyramid is also called as tetrahedron. This triangular pyramid or tetrahedron is a four phase plane triangular solid. It consisting of four triangular faces and six edges. If I consider this triangular pyramid, which is also termed as tetrahedron, I can represent it as if you clearly observe this triangular pyramid or tetrahedron, you can see four triangular faces. Phase number one, phase number two, phase number three, and phase which is towards the board that is phase number four. I am showing phase number four with dotted line because phase number four is invisible to us. And if you clearly observe this triangular pyramid or tetrahedron contains six edges one, two, three, four, five, and six. With this knowledge on triangular pyramid or tetrahedron, let us move on and solve our problem number 15 based on this triangular pyramid. The problem number 15 states that a tetrahedron of 55 mm sides rests on one of its corners such that the edge containing that corner is inclined to Xp at 50 degree and Vp at 30 degree draw its projections. If you clearly observe the problem, the tetrahedron is resting with one of its corners on Hp. Therefore, in the first position, I should make this tetrahedron stand on Hp without inclining to any of the planes. Now, if you observe this triangular pyramid or tetrahedron, if I draw a corner position and take the projection in the front view, I will get the edge, the slant edge. If I take the edge position towards my right hand side and if I plot in my front view, I will get a triangular face. As I mentioned, since it is a triangular pyramid, if I look at from top, I will see an equilateral triangle. Whereas for square pyramid, the top will be a square. For hexagonal pyramid, the top will be a hexagon. For pentagonal pyramid, the top will be a pentagon. For triangular pyramid, the top will be a triangle. Let us move on and solve this problem. First, let us draw XY line. This is vertical plane and this is horizontal plane. Now, the solution is in first position, the tetrahedron stands on HP. In the second position, edge containing the resting corner makes an angle of 50 degree with HP. In third position, the remaining inclination is with respect to vertical plane. The same edge makes 30 degree with P. Now, since the tetrahedron is resting with one of its corners, therefore draw an equilateral triangle such that I will get corner towards my right hand side. Once you draw this edge at the midpoint of this edge, draw the altitude as a reference. Now, using compass, measure this 55 mm side length and cut this reference altitude line from either corners. Joining which, I will get an equilateral triangle. Now, to mark the center of this tetrahedron or triangular pyramid, draw a perpendicular bisector from any of the corner to the opposite edge. If I draw a perpendicular bisector from this bottom corner, the opposite edge is this one. So therefore, if I draw the perpendicular bisector, I will get the center of this tetrahedron. Since tetrahedron is nothing but a triangular pyramid, draw a dark line from all the corners to the center. This completes the tetrahedron in its top view with four triangular faces. Face number one, face number two, face number three and face number four is towards the board. 
marking the corners of this triangular pyramid i have a b c and the axis at the center will be o at top and o1 at base which is invisible now take the projection vertically upwards and draw the front view the question is how to draw the front view of this triangular pyramid for this triangular pyramid the very important note to be noted down to draw the front view is that if you clearly observe the only edge which is parallel to vertical plane is c to o like b to c is inclined at an angle of 2 vertical plane ab is perpendicular to vertical plane and ac is also inclined at certain degrees to vertical plane the only edge which is parallel to vertical plane is c to o therefore this is the only slant edge which gives us the true length in its front view what i mean to say is that the slant edge with its true length that is co if i project from the top view to the horizontal plane if i extend the line the line length will be reduced c to o that is what i have marked c to o so in a front view i have c to o if i draw i will get a reduced length which is co since this is the only line which is parallel to vertical plane this gives us the true length from our knowledge we know that if a line is parallel to vertical plane it gives us the true length in its front view if a line is parallel to horizontal plane it gives us the true length in its top view now with this knowledge draw the projection vertically upwards arbitrarily you draw the axis once you draw the axis for an unknown length using compass measure the true length which is 55 mm fixing corner c prime intersect this axis so this gives us the apex of the axis which is o prime now from this apex join to the corners in the front view observer will be here to the observer the corners b and c are visible whereas the corner a is invisible therefore mark corner b prime a prime is invisible and c prime in the front view axis is always invisible we are o1 prime and o prime at the apex now show the true dimension of this triangular pyramid now in the second position i should draw this edge containing the corner at an angle of 50 degree to horizontal plane so therefore reconstruct line c prime o prime inclined at an angle of 50 degree to horizontal plane based on this edge c prime o prime reconstruct this entire triangular pyramid first using protractor mark 50 degree measuring counter clockwise on this 50 degree marking reconstruct the edge c prime o prime which is of true dimension 55 mm i have transferred c prime o prime which is inclined to hp at an angle of 50 degrees now using compass you measure c prime to b prime draw an arc again you measure from o prime to b prime from o prime you cut this arc thereby i have transferred the corners b prime and a prime join b prime c prime and also b prime o prime measure the distance of o1 prime from b prime and transfer it i have transferred o1 prime now join o1 prime o prime which is the axis of this triangular pyramid take the projection vertically downwards and also from horizontal 
If I do that, I will get this completes taking projection vertically downwards and also from horizontal. This projection lines should be very very thin. Now marking the corners, I have corner C, O, O1, corner B and A. Now to avoid the confusion in marking the invisible edges, first you mark the boundary of this triangular pyramid. If I mark the boundary of this triangular pyramid, I have A to B, B to O and O to A. This completes marking of the boundary of this pyramid. Now, in the top view, observer will be here. To the observer, the farthest corner is C prime. Therefore, all the edges emerging from C are invisible except they lie on the boundary of this pyramid. Except at the boundaries, all the edges emerging from C prime, that is C, are invisible. The edges emerging from C prime are B to C, C to A, and C to O. That is C to O, C to A, and finally B to C. This completes marking of the invisible edges. And also all these slanted are also connected. Now a small amount of force is left out between O1 to C, show it as axis. Because axis is from O1 to O, which cannot be shown because we have an invisible edge CO overlapping on the axis. This completes the top view in the second position. Now in the third position, it clearly states that the edge containing the resting corner is inclined to VP at 30 degrees. The edge containing the resting corner is C prime O prime, that is C to O. If you clearly observe, the true length of C prime O prime is 55 millimeters, whereas here C to O is measuring less than 55 millimeters. So therefore, since I have an apparent length of this edge containing the resting corner, I should construct the apparent angle now. For 55 mm, the angle of inclination is 30 degree to BP. How much is for this apparent length is the question, which is nothing but the beta angle for this problem. Let us move on and find the apparent inclination for this apparent dimension CO. First, you draw a 30 degree line inclined to vertical plane. On this 30 degree line, you reconstruct the true dimension of CO, which is 55 mm. If I draw a 30 degree line to vertical plane and incline it, there might be a chance that this diagram might enter the vertical plane. Therefore, to avoid that, draw a parallel line to XY line, offsetting to certain distance. On this parallel line, which you have reconstructed, draw a 30 degree line. On this offset line, using protractor, you mark 30 degrees to VP. Now, draw a reference line inclined at an angle of 30 degrees to VP. Now, mark point O on this 30 degree line. The true length of CO is known, which is 55 mm. So, draw 55 mm on this 30 degree line. This gives the other corner of this true length 55 mm. At the end, which we have marked 55 mm, fix the locus. Using compass, you measure the apparent dimension CO, fixing at same O, intersect this new locus. We have transferred corner C now. Join C to O with dashed lines, which is invisible. Extend it to measure the beta angle. The beta angle for this problem is turning out to be 52 degrees. Now, using compass, you measure C to A, draw an arc fixing at C, measure from O to A, intersect this arc. Again, repeat the same to transfer corner B from C to B, you measure using compass, fixing at C, draw an arc. 
again you measure from O to B fixing at O you intersect this arc thereby we have transferred corners A and corner B now join the corners take the projection vertically upwards and also from horizontal if I do that I will get Also, mark over so, taking projections vertically upwards and also from horizontal. Marking the corners, I will get A prime, B prime, O prime, O1 prime, and finally I have C prime. In order to avoid confusion in marking the invisible edges, first you mark the boundary of this triangular pyramid. If I do that, I will get Boundary as A prime to C prime, C prime to O prime, O prime to B prime, and B prime to A prime. Also mark the axis O prime to O1 prime. Now in the front view, the observer will be here. So to the observer, the farthest base corner of this pyramid is A. For pyramids, we should always look for farthest base corner. Therefore, for this triangular pyramid, which is also called as tetrahedron, the farthest base corner is A. So, all the edges emerging from A are invisible, except they lie on the boundary of this pyramid. And also, to the observer, the base is completely visible, the base is nearer to the observer. The edges moving from A are A to B, A to B is at the boundary, visible to the observer. Next, A to C. A to C is also on the boundary, it is also visible to the observer. Next, A to O, A to O is not on the boundary, therefore it is invisible. So mark A to O as invisible edge. Now, finally you join B to C, that is B prime to C prime. This completes the final view of the given problem. If you clearly observe C prime, B prime is visible, A prime, O prime is invisible. As per our second condition, common lines cannot cross over. One is invisible, another one is visible edge. As usual, I use the same color for these two front views, which means that these two are of same dimensions. For these two top views, I use the same color, which means that these two are of same dimensions. As per the given question, the tetrahedron is resting on one of its corner on HP. That's all from this lecture. Thank you.